So, we've got our rules for integers. With addition and with subtraction. Okay? Please make sure you have them written down. That is important. Alright? So, 7 plus y equals 15. Inverse operation tells us minus 7, minus 7, oh, y is 8. Division, that means we use multiplication times 9, goodbye, times 9, it's 81. Multiplication, we undo that with division, 4. Subtraction, we undo it with addition. Forty-two. These are the inverse operations. You feel pretty confident. Now, we're going to focus on doing these same things, but with integers. All right? Learn to solve one-step equations with integers. The sum of the numbers and its opposite or additive inverse is zero. All right, here's what they've got. The only difference is we're using integers. So now I've got to look at these. I look and see I got my two sides to the equation. Hopefully you see we want to work on the left side because that's where the variable is. We want to get the variable all by itself. So there's a negative six. Well, how do I get negative six to zero? I do the opposite. The opposite of negative six, because I got to look at what's in front of there, I would add six. Negative 6 plus 6, that makes 0. That's what I want. So if I add 6 to this side, what must I do to the other side? I must add 6. That is negative 1. x equals negative 1. Negative 6 plus negative 1. That does equal negative 7. It checks out. Okay? So we really must look at that symbol in front of the problem. Here's the problem that they're leading into. All right, add six, add six. We do the opposite of whatever number is on the side of the variable. And there we go. We substitute it back in, it does check out. All right, we're here on this problem. Would we want to work on the left side or the right side? Hopefully you're saying right side. So, by looking at the right side, positive 5. If we look at that sign and everything, how do I get rid of that? Oh, I subtract 5. I subtract 5. Both numbers are negative, and we're subtracting here. So, negative 3, and then there's the negative 5. Negative 3 minus 5, signs are the same. Negative 8, P equals negative 8. Remember, you have to keep straight the addition and the subtraction from the multiplication and division. Okay? Signs are the same. So we add and keep the sign. That's what it said. There's the item in the back of the room. All right, hopefully some of you took a picture of it before you left. All right, if not, we can work on getting it on Google Classroom. All right? They subtract 5 and subtract 5. Good. Notice they put adding a negative 5 to help you kind of understand the idea. Signs are the same. So we get negative 8 as our answer. We put that back in. And that is true. All right. Y minus 9. All right. Equals negative 40. So they're subtracting 9. The operation, oh, because we have to deal with this at first, that we'll use then is, hopefully you realize, addition. So that gets y by itself. They're different, so you subtract and keep the sign of the bigger. They're the same, so it's zero. All right? If we add 9 over here, subtract. 40 minus 9 is 31. Signs were different, so we subtracted. Keep the sign of the bigger number. 40 is bigger than 9, so it's a negative 31. A negative 31. I do expect to have some more questions tomorrow. I will have um, my Google Classroom open so individuals can jump on and ask questions as they need. 
All right. Up here, you can see we're going to work on the left-hand side. <coughs> I have a negative 3 that I want to get rid of. If it's a negative 3, hopefully you realize that I'm going to add 3. If I add 3 on one side to get rid of stuff, I am going to add 3 on the other side. Opposite signs, 9 minus 3 is 6. 9 is bigger than 3, so I know I have a negative answer. X equals negative 6. Negative 3 plus negative 6 does equal negative 9. Yes, we did it right. All right, let's move on. When we check it out and put it in there, it does all work out skiddly do. All right, here again, now would be a good time to pause, do the problem, then come back. We see this side where we work first. We're going to subtract the two. Now, if we subtract on one side, hopefully Lily's saying to her sister, we subtract on the other side. Signs are the same, so you add and keep the sign. Q equals negative 8. Negative 8 plus 6, or plus 2 is negative 6. All right, let's double check and make sure the math they did matches our math. Okay. They did get negative 8. When they put it back in, it works out. Good deal. All right. With this one, take a pause for the cause and do the problem. Now that you've tried it and you're continuing the video, I know I gotta look at this left hand side because it's got the variable. Add a seven to it. Add a seven to it. All right, oops, excuse me. Signs are different, so I subtract. That makes 27. Now is it positive or negative? Hopefully you're yelling at your computer. Negative, Mr. Pong, because 34 is bigger than seven, so 34, we keep the negative number with it. Signs are different, add or subtract, and keep the sign of the bigger absolute value number of the number. Okay, negative 27. Let's see if that checks out. They do add 7 on each side. We get negative 27, and then they plug it back in, and it works out to be negative 34. Yes, sir, Bob. Now, we want to get the B all by itself. We have seen division. So we know that we must use multiplication. Now here's where most of you are going to make a mistake. Okay, I put it over the 1. Times 5 over 1. Oh, they cross out. Times 5 over 1. Oh, 30. But you would be wrong. You must divide by, or multiply by whatever is underneath exactly. So not just 5, but you need to multiply by negative 5. You need to multiply by negative 5. They cross out. B is left. 6 times negative 5 is negative 30. Okay. B is negative 30. And let's look at that. When we plug it back in and see if it makes sense. So we do all our work. They did their work, got negative 30. Now they're plugging it back in. Negative divided by a negative does make a positive. 30 divided by 5 is 6. Positive 6. We did it right. Okay? Remember, you must divide by whatever's there. So in this case, there's multiplication, 8 times y. So we work on that side because that's got the variable. We divide by 8. There's a positive 8 on top, so we divide by a positive 8. So we get a 1y down here. We divide by 8. So that makes negative 50. For our answer. Okie dokie. Negative 50 equals y. Divided by positive 8, divided by a positive 8. Signs are different, so we know our answer is negative. We must keep these things straight, because if we don't, they'll cost us lots of points. They divided by 8, divided by 8. Hey, we got our negative 50. They're going to plug it back in here. Negative 50 
times 8 is negative 400. It checks out. Okay? Here we do the same thing. Why don't you take a stab at it on your own? Now that you've come back, we see, I like to keep these here, positive 4. So I know I'm going to multiply by 4 over 1. Now is it negative 4 or positive 4? Hopefully you're realizing and thinking it is positive 4 because 4 divided by 4 would be a 1. So multiply by positive 4. 16. All right. 96. Yes, 96. One's positive, one's negative. Negative is your answer. C equals negative 96. Let's make sure we do what we needed to do. All right. They saw this. They multiplied both sides by 4. Okay? They got negative 96. We plug it back in. Negative 96 divided by 4. That does make negative 24. It checks out, and we are good to go. All right? Here we have another multiplication one. So let's use the inverse and do what you're supposed to. Now that you've tried it out, let's see if you did it correctly. We focus on this side. We're going to divide by 4. It's going to be a positive 4 because it's a positive 4 up top. 4 divided by 4 is 1. That's what we wanted. 1x, which we don't write the 1. If we divide by 4 on one side, we must divide by 4 on the other side. Negative 50 again is our answer. And that's what x equals. Let's double check and make sure we did it right. All right. So, they put that negative 50 back in. Ne 4 times negative 50, negative 200s, they do check out, and we're good and dandy. Now, of course, we got to make one. The harder part about this is probably making up the equation. I'm not going to be a stickler about the equation since we can't work through them together. But in 2003, a manufacturer made a profit of $300 million. This amount was $100 million more than the profit in 2002. What was the profit, profit in 2002? So, $300 million is the profit that he made in 2003. This was 100 million more than the profit in 2002. I'm just going to put P in there for profit because I don't know what he made in 2002, so I just put P in there. So P plus 100 equals 300,000. So hopefully you see minus 100. Minus 100. All right. What did he make in 2002? We're left with a P. We do our subtraction. So 200. 200 million was the profit. Don't forget it was two mil, 200 million. All right. Let's look at what they did, and I think this might be our last problem, or second to last. All right, P represent this year's profit. All right, there it is. 300 equals 100 million plus P. We do that equation. We subtract 200 million was the profit. Oh, our second to last one, I guess. So this year, our bake sale made a profit of $243. This was an increase of $125 over last year. So $243 was what we made this year. It was the amount that was bigger. Then we had an amount, oh, whoops. Then we had an amount, we didn't know what it was, but we knew that if we added $125 and the amount from the bake sale last year, so I'll just put bake sale amount, we would get that amount. So seeing this, hopefully you see it's a subtraction problem again, because we're gonna use the inverse operations. Here we go, oh, it is a subtraction problem. $118 what they made last year. All right, you're ready to go. Be careful with the integers, take time to stop and think about them. All right guys, bye.